Folks of the weather, welcome to this episode of Weather Decoded TV. And in this episode of Weather Decoded TV, I'm going to talk about a cutting edge new tool that I've developed called the Wheel of Tor and how this can significantly leverage your severe weather forecasting. Okay. And I'm going to talk about how you can use this tool, what it means and how you can forecast the tornado potential for a specific location for a specific time. You have all this data, what does it mean? So I'm gonna plot this out on this map and you're gonna get these different looks and all that. I'm gonna go over that in this episode as well. And we're going to use a case study for April 4th, 2017 when doing this uh, Wheel of Tour. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. And if you'd like to follow along, I have a book that I've created called the Tornado Chemical X Formula. I give you a bunch of cheat sheets on the exact ingredients that you use to forecast tornadoes. And I also have included the template of this Wheel of Tor thing that we're going to talk about in the book. And lots of cheat sheets, some even some uh, you know brief tutorials in the book as well. And you can print all that out. You can print as many as you want out. The link is in the description if you want it. Go and click the link, enter your email. I'll send it right off to you. I'll send you some more forecasting tutorials and stuff like the forecasts. And and so if you want that, just click the link below. And without further ado, let's just get right into this thing. And let's forecast the weather for a couple of different locations. Welcome to the, the marker board we got going on here. This is the Wheel of Tor. Okay, this is a tool I've developed to assess tornado potential for specific locations. And you got this wheel of ingredients. There's different types of ingredients here. And it measures you know, how these ingredients fit into the tornado potential here. So this is a, it goes from a scale from zero to 10. 10 being out there, zero being over there. 10 is gonna be the highest potential, zero is gonna be the lowest potential. So when you see a bunch of ingredients you know, closer to 10, That means there's a much higher tornado potential for that specific location than if you were to see values near zero. Okay, so 10 is going to be higher potential for tornadoes. Zero is going to be lower and stuff in between, obviously, is going to kind of relate to that as well. So this is going to be your different ingredients. And uh, I'm going to go over a couple of these for a couple of different specific locations. And you can kind of get different looks to these wheels that indicate different types of storm modes and tornadoes. And I'm not going to go into that, but we're just going to do a couple of quick assessments here. We're not going to pay attention to any of this out here. but We're just going to focus on this inner circle here real quick. So what I've done here is I'm going to click on an image. I'm going to click on a sounding for an area just southwest of Atlanta near that boundary and ahead of that cold front. So we're gonna first click on this area right here. When I think again, I think the best tornado potential is gonna be over here. So we're gonna kind of examine that area right there at near Atlanta. So go back to this and I've pulled up a sounding for the Atlanta area and you can see this is a very good sounding possible hazard type PDS tornado, which means potentially strong tornado potential for that area and got good instability, good shear, and you can find all of these ingredients. You can either look at individual maps and guesstimate, or you can go on here and it gives you all of them down in these couple of boxes here, this box right here. And so we'll start off with a zero to six cam shear here. We can look at the sounding, and we go down to zero, to, or surface to six cam. Zero is the same as surface in this case, but surface is six cam shear. We got 73 here. Now, what does that mean? Well. We go back to the book here I've created, and I have have the Wheel of Tor template in here that you can download. Again, if you want this book, click the link in the description. I'll send it right off to you. It shows you all of the uh, values and what they associate on the Wheel of Tor. So we had 73 here for surface to 6 km shear. So we'll find zero to sur- surface to 6 km shear here, which is here. We'll go down to 73, which is again, a 10. That's a 10. So greater than 70 knots is a 10. That is some pretty good shear. So what does that mean? We go back to our wheel of tour and we fill in the 10 right here and you can color it in, shade it in, do whatever you want. I'm just gonna create an outline. Otherwise it would take forever and quite frankly, it would look kind of messy on a computer screen. But nonetheless, 10 for that. So 
That's uh, looking pretty good. How about zero to eight cam shear? Zero to eight kilometer shear. Look at this real quick. Our zero to eight kilometer shear is 78, 78. Okay, and you want higher values as you go farther up. But we'll look at that 78, 78 to 83 is a nine. So that's gonna be a nine. Okay, so we can fill this one in red as well. So I'm gonna fill that in right there like that. And what I like to do, and again, you can print these out, do whatever you want. So I like to make the greens zero to three. That means slight tornado potential. I like to make the moderates kind of an orange color, which would be four through about seven. Again, you can do any way you want, but this is what I'm gonna do. And then the high potentials, eight through 10. So this kind of gives you an extra visual look to it. We can really make things a lot more useful that way. So let's get back to the sounding here. So we got zero to eight cam, zero to three cam, uh, six cam. Let's go over zero to three cam here. Zero to three cam shear, that's gonna be 55. 55, so we'll go back to our chart here. 55 is again gonna be another 10, another 10 for this one right here. And let's stop at this, uh, let's draw a divider line. I'll probably have to go in and add that back in. But anyway, we're gonna divide these two up. We're gonna do zero to three cam shear and then zero to three cam storm relative helicity, which kind of factors in spin and stuff. And I'll get into that in a second. but. These two are equally important, so we're going to kind of divide that in half. So that's going to be a 10 as well. And some people might wonder, where did I get these values from? Well, these are from kind of my own experiences, my own data from chasing, my storm chasing. And then also the Storm Prediction Center and a lot of research and all that type of stuff kind of have put these together. And these are the values that indicate tornado potential. So... We're going to go over the next one. So 0 to 3 cam storm relative helicity. That's going to be, let's go down here. Let's find that storm relative helicity. Where is it? All right, here, right here, SRH. And we're going to do 0 to 3 cam first. That's 385. So 385. And we'll go back to that chart I made. Okay, and... Where is that? That is right here. So 385, that's going to correspond to this value right here, which is a 5. So that's going to be a 5 on that scale. So that's going to be an orange. We'll use an orange color for that, for the storm relative helicity. So that you find your 5 and you track it over. Here's your 5 right here. And you're going to fill that in right there like that. So not as good on the helicity. And this could indicate not as good directional shear, which seems to be a problem this day. This could be our kind of our issue this day is directional shear. So anyway, we'll go to the next one, zero to one cam shear. This is the low level shear. This is highly important for tornado development. Your surface to three cam and really all of them are, you know, eight cam is gonna be good for supercell, six cam as well. But this low level shear, good for tornado development, really important to have high values. So surface to one cam is gonna be 29 knots. So we'll go back to that uh, book if we can find that, okay, click on that. We'll go back to our book here and surface to one cam shear is gonna be, let's see, zero to surface, that was 29. So that's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a seven right there, a seven. I'm gonna move these around so I can access these a little bit better. So that's gonna be a seven, that was 29, right? So we'll factor that in. The wheel of tour here. We're going to use an orange color. We'll track it all the way around. That's going to be a seven out here. And there you go. So, pretty good threat. Pretty good threat. The next one we're going to use is the zero to one cam SRH. This is very important for tornado development as well. And you can see that's a 281. 281. So, we'll go back to this zero to one cam SRH is a 281, this looks a lot better, this low level shear here, that's gonna be an eight. So we're gonna use a red color for that. Pretty good, pretty good. So we'll track that out, that's gonna be an eight right here. Just like that. So, so far, this the wind shear looks pretty good. Got some issues maybe there, but still pretty good. And so our next one's gonna be instability. This section right here kinda of deals with instability. You know, undo that, but anyway, these kind of quadrants right here correspond to instability. So you can kind of 
I've kind of put them all together. Instability up here, capping over here, moisture over here, and then shear down here. So we'll go back to ML cape, and that's a mixed layer cape that kind of averages out all the cape in the atmosphere here. That's going to be between this red line and white line now. These, they actually give you the values down here, so you can go down to cape right here and find ML. So this would be ML cape, SFC cape, which is surface cape, MU cape, which is most unstable, unstable cape. We're just going to do ML cape, so that's kind of how that works. Anyway, we got 3,286. So now we'll go back to our, our book here, and we'll go down to ML cape, which I think is on the second page here. Yep. And it was 3,286. So we'll go down and we get that as a seven. So we can fill that in with an orange color and we can uh, find the seven line, track it around and it should be right here. So we'll fill that in right there like that. And so the ML cape is valued at a seven. How about the surface cape? This is going to measure instability near the surface if you lift a parcel from the surface, you start down here and go up. This is important as well. Uh, let's look at that. And that is 4,233. 4,233. And surface cape, you can really get a good idea for how much daytime heating there is in the area. If you have higher values, probably more, it's probably warmer at the surface. So it's at 4,233. So we'll look at this and we got I think that's uh, on the first page. So, and no, actually, it's the same thing. So these two are going to be the same thing. ML cape and SB cape, the same values here. 4,233. That's going to fall in the nine range. So very potent surface-based cape here. Uh, for this time of year, April, pretty warm. That's going to be in the nine range. So we'll put that out here like this. And uh, again, we're having some pretty dynamic systems for being you know, this early and this many of them. There's been quite a few here. So there we go, a nine for that. 700 to 500 millibar lapse rates. What the heck are those? Well, that's kind of indicating how fast the temperature is cooling with height in the mid-levels. Um, you know, it could be uh, really cold at the surface and you think, oh, it's not going to do much storms. But maybe the temperatures are cooling ridiculously fast in this layer right here. And because of that, maybe that adds instability because you have colder air up here, warmer air down here. Warm air is going to rise over that cold air, and so that's going to create some instability. So the 700 to 500 millibar lapse rates, that's going to be found down in this area right here. This is actually kind of important with tornadic development as well. Um, really this area right here, 700 to 500. So that's 7.5 uh, Celsius per kilometer per thousand meters here and we can find that here and that's 7.5 so that's going to fall in the five range it's going to fall in the five range borderline five and yeah the lapse rates aren't as uh, crazy as one might think but it is very warm and moist and so that warm moisture is really going to add a lot of instability to the air but nonetheless five that'll do it for the moderate kind of area and we can fill that in with red here so we'll track that circle around like this right here and there's our 500 or 700 to 500 millibar lapse rates now how about our lifted index that creates that's a little index that measures lift instability in the atmosphere as well this is just kind of an extra thing i threw on here our lifted index is our you know off the roof here it is uh let's do you know with this let's just do the mixed layer lifted index that's going to be a 10 at negative 10 and so that's pretty crazy just off the bat let's see what the chart says though a 10 that's going to be a 7 that's going to be a 7 so we'll use this color kind of a high-end moderate look to it and we'll track this around that should be right there 10 9 8 7 so the 7 is going to be right there and that's moderate so ml sin that's going to be our capping and we'll look at this uh, real fast. The ML sin, that's going to be your mixed layer uh, negative instability. So that's going to be kind of where uh, there's a warm layer aloft, like a cap or something. And the cold air, it's going to be colder underneath, so it's not going to be able to lift. And so that creates a lid. But let's see, where is that? That's going to be 
right over here and those are zero those are uncapped that means there's probably going to be a storm in the area there's no capping whatsoever in that area um, so that you know you can use that but before storms uh, occur if you see sin values kind of in the uh, the 40 to 60 area just kind of averaging out like that with some pockets where it's zero like this sounding but a lot of areas are kind of capped but there's little pockets that kind of indicates that there's probably going to be some capping so there's not going to be widespread storms but there's still going to be uh, isolated storms in those little areas where there's zero capping such as this sounding so the storms will be more isolated and super cellular they won't go up at all at once because if they go up all at once the storms are going to be kind of competing with each other and that lowers the tornado potential and hail potential as well it increases the wind potential but decreases the tornado potential so it's actually good to have some capping but uh with zero that's you know i think that's just a five it's because it's uncapped i can't really can't really say i'm probably going to end up taking these two out and replacing them with something else but you know we'll just ignore those for now but nonetheless uh this this event looks to be pretty decent in terms of uh tornado potential capping wise there might be some you know there might be too many that go up we'll see what happens but that is a concern so the next one is lcl which is the lifted condensation level and this is uh where the the potential for cloud bases to form how low are they going to form you want them lower for tornado development so the lower the better here and so you can find that uh right here and uh we'll do uh We'll do uh, M, the mixed layer LCL, which is 438. And uh, we can find that on this map right here. 438 is going to be, it looks like, that's going to be a 9 right here. That's going to be a 9. That's pretty low, pretty low LCLs. And if you go back to that sounding, you can see the moisture is very deep, very close together, very saturated. The LCLs are going to be very low. So 438 for this little area right here, that's going to be corresponding to a 9, I believe that was. Yeah, nine. So we can paint that all the way out here, like that. Kind of paint like that. And then our last one is precipital water. Actually, we got two more, but precipital water. So that measures the depth of moisture. Deeper the moisture, the better for these uh, tornado events most of the time. Uh, sometimes you can get too much moisture, which would give it an HP supercell. And those don't, they kind of lower the potential potential for tornadoes a little bit because there's too much rain and outflow anyway that's a 1.26 so we'll go back to this and a 1.26 is going to be kind of in this range right here which is a nine um yeah that's gonna be a nine right there that's probably going to indicate classic supercells which is kind of interesting you know if you go a little bit further southeast of this sounding that i took it's probably gonna be more hp the southeast is notorious for hp supercells but there could be some areas where especially you know farther north you're going to have some classic supercells that develop here and that's perfect for tornadoes so we got a nine for that area so yeah and uh, one more thing here is the critical angle we'll factor we'll factor this in here and i'm gonna i'm gonna use a black color for this and i'm gonna kind of dash it okay for these secondary circles. This is a uh, critical angle. This is gonna measure the directional shear in the lower levels here. And if you go back to your sounding, your critical angle is gonna be kind of right in this area right here. You wanna see a, a kind of a, a hodograph with a 90 degree turn kind of in this area. And it's not really happening that much. You wanna see more turning in the low levels, more sharp turning. And, uh, but it's still decent. You got a 64. You want this at 90. That's kind of where the, the, the bell curve is the best. Anything over a 90, you start to decrease the potential. Anything under, you decrease as well. 90 is the, the best area. But 64, that should be pretty decent. We'll go back up and look at that. Again, this, uh, this isn't everything. But this is very important because if your critical angle, if you have no directional shear, it could favor a line of storms rather than a supercell. So 64, what is that going to be? That's going to be, that is going to be in this right here, 60 to 67 or 125 to 135. That's going to be a six. So decent, decent, you know, not like crazy, but decent. And uh, so we'll use that black color and we'll find the six. 
And we'll start at that dash line. Okay, I just start at that dash line and stop here. You see that how it stops right there and stops right there. This kind of measures the areas in these levels right here of turning. So that's kind of why I did that. And we'll put it back to the center there and we'll leave it like that for now. So so putting it together, what is this saying? This is saying some pretty good tornado potential. You got a lot of values near that 10 mark. Okay, you got a pretty balanced wheel here. It's good to see balance. A lot of values close to that 10 mark. There is a couple of areas of concern. And so you can kind of pick that out from this wheel of tour where your strengths and weaknesses are for each setup. This overall kind of averages out, you know, like a seven or an eight out of 10 in terms of tornado potential. So maybe seven to eight out of 10. And, uh, you know, I don't look into those Torcon things as much, but I think actually the Torcons are around that for that area as well. So kind of cool how that works out. But yeah, seven to eight out of 10 for that area. Pretty good tornado potential. So our strengths definitely are going to be the moisture here and the deep layer shear. There's some very good deep layer shear and good moisture for this setup. Some pretty good instability, especially surface-based instability. And then the uh, areas of concern are going to be kind of, uh, you know, the lapse rates, the capping. You know, maybe it goes up too quickly and there's too much of a mess. That's going to be a concern. And that could lower the tornado potential. The lapse rates, but that's going to get offset by these good surface-based instability. So the question is, is if we don't get good instability if we don't get good surface heating this setup could be a washout and it really could there might be some problems with that as well so especially further north so that's going to be very important to uh, look out for and then another thing we can take away is this area right here this is a little bit lower the kind of the zero to one km ordeal for this you know the directional shear that's what it's mostly indicating here. How much directional shear are we going to get from the surface to about one kilometer up? Are we going to get enough turning? Is there going to be enough turning? That's pretty much the big question. If we don't get enough of that, again, the setup's going to be much more of a linear kind of washout kind of thing. And that will lower the tornado potential. But the system's so dynamic. Right now, this... This particular circle indicates that that's going to be enough. I mean, even if you just get enough of this with how much deep layer shear, moisture, and instability there is, yeah, you could definitely get some tornadoes and maybe some strong track tornadoes. But again, if the surface heating isn't there and that low level shear decides to be more southerly or southwesterly and the cap just goes up all at once, the tornado potential is going to go from moderate to high to probably slight. Just, just like that in a snap of a finger. So these setups out in the southeastern United States are pretty delicate and are pretty known to have those types of kind of factors. You got to watch out for those factors a lot of the time with these southeastern United States setups. So with that said, that's kind of what that uh, wheel of tour looks like for the area southwest of Atlanta, Georgia. So now what I want you to do, if you're following along with this video and you're still interested in looking at more, is let's uh, click on another one. I'm not going to go over it. I'm just going to paint this out, and you can paint this out as well. And we can see how close we ended up with, you know, our wheels here. What we can click on here is let's uh, let's uh, click on maybe out, out here in central Alabama. So let's click on the sounding out there and see what kind of wheel of tour we're gonna get for that area. And then after that, let's click on maybe something closer to the surface low out here. Let's click maybe something right along the nose of that, that moist axis, instability axis out in Southern Indiana. So we'll do one out there and then we'll do one out here and we'll see the wheel of tours and we'll compare them all together. And then we had the one we just did right here, kind of Southwest of Atlanta along that boundary. So we'll compare them all together. So go ahead and do that if you uh, want to do that. Alrighty, so here's what I got for the Central Alabama Wheel of Tour. And I kind of clicked on the Birmingham area, because it's a bigger area. It averaged out about 7 out of 10. And here is our values here. You can see that the surface base cape is off the charts. I think it was like 4,500. Really, the instability in general, awesome. Precip uh, the uh, moisture is pretty good as well, and the deep layer shear is pretty good as well. 
Again, the low level shear, the low level turning and stuff, that's a little bit of concern. That's kind of in this area right here. Again, that's going to be a concern of this setup. How much capping is going to happen? Another concern. And is this going to happen? You know, if we don't get enough uh, surface base sensitivity or just instability in general, the lifted index and laps, or excuse me, the lapse rates here aren't like awesome. They're pretty good, definitely pretty good, but they aren't awesome. So we're going to definitely need some surface heating for this setup, some very good surface heating. But that's Birmingham area all the way, or, you know, all together, putting it all together, about a, you know, maybe a 7 out of 10, I would say, for that area for tornado potential. Again, one of these ingredients can throw the whole thing off, but in general, that's kind of what that looks like. And yeah, so that's pretty good. And here's what I got for the plot in southern Indiana near the surface low that kind of secondary area of tornado potential. And it's a much different environment. This is kind of between Evansville and Louisville where I clicked. And this is kind of what it looks like. You can see that the deep layer shear is very good here. 0 to 8 km and 0 to 6 km maxed out at 10. I mean, some very good shear up there. Your jet stream looks pretty good up there. Now, the moisture and instability is much, much less. You can see how much less that is down here. And also the low level shear isn't the best either up here. There's some decent turning, um, but just in general, you know, your helicity values, your low level shear and helicity values aren't the best up here for tornado potential. And the moisture is a lot less up here as well. Still decent, still kind of moderate worthy, you know, moderate uh, in uh, on fives and sixes, but in general, uh, much less as you can tell. But the shear is a little bit better. So you got this low instability, low moisture, but high shear kind of set up further north in uh, near the surface low. So those could kind of offset each other a little bit. We'll see what happens. But again, if if there isn't much surface heating, the tornado threat is significantly less. Lapse rates aren't all that great. And uh, the low level shear isn't all that great. So I've, I've just kind of made it kind of an average five out of 10 potential, okay? You know, just fifth, maybe a 50% within a 50 mile radius or so with that. So that's what you can kind of look for when you're looking at these wheel of tours is uh, what's missing, what's needed and all of that. And if we go back, we can kind of look at that you can see how the moisture definitely is lower for areas further north. There is a moist axis here, so it'll be important to be along that moist axis. It's possible that you could get some pooling up here along this warm front, and that could enhance the moisture and the helicity and all of that. And maybe you could get a tornado potential up there. And so that that's definitely something to watch. But yeah, all the instability, all of the uh, moisture is going to be farther south. There's going to be a little bit better shear further north, and we'll see what happens with that warm front. That's going to be very important. And we can go check out the significant tornado parameter and see how close we were. Let's see how this tool ended up doing. This is at 4 p.m. And, yeah, you got a little uh, secondary area up here. You know, those that sounding I plotted was kind of in this area. So, yeah, right up just north of that, north of that plot I just did along that warm front you probably have better helicity and you probably have slightly better moisture along that front so pooling of moisture and, and helicity so yeah maybe some uh, better tornado potential just north of that but i wanted to use that tool in kind of different environments for you and then we got the boundary and the front here and yeah very high tornado potential down here as indicated and i think one of those soundings was right on top of that and then the birmingham birmingham one kind of in this area as well so that's what it's looking like, and so hopefully you can use that tool uh, for your tornado forecasting event. Other than that, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like this tool, go ahead and share this video with a friend. Um, show them this tool, a meteorology friend. And uh, if you want more of these forecasting tutorials and forecasting breakdowns and some more of these uh, weather forecasting tools and techniques, go ahead and click the subscribe button here in the middle of the channel. I'll be releasing more of these probably on a weekly basis, maybe bi-weekly basis. And again, if you want the book to this Wheel of Tour, go ahead and click the link in the description, enter your name and your email.